Gaza, one of the most densely populated areas in the world where the consequences of Israel's military actions are most acutely felt. Israel's war on Gaza has claimed more than 41,000 Palestinian lives. This, along with the blockade of Gaza, the forced evictions of Palestinian families in East Jerusalem, the desecration of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the continued expansion of Israeli settlements in the West Bank have led to a boiling point. Since 2023, the Israeli military has engaged in near-constant exchanges of fire with Hezbollah, a powerful militant group backed by Iran, and further entrenched Hezbollah's stance against Israel's policies in the region. On 31st July 2024, Ismail Haniyeh, the political leader of Hamas, was assassinated along with his personal bodyguard in the Iranian capital Tehran after attending the inauguration ceremony for Iranian President Massoud Pazeshkian. On 17 and 18 September 2024, thousands of handheld pages and walkie-talkies intended for use by Hezbollah exploded simultaneously across Lebanon and Syria in an Israeli attack. 42 people had died, including at least 12 civilians, one being an eight-year-old girl. On 27 September 2024, Hassan Nasrallah, a Lebanese politician who served as the Secretary General of Hezbollah since 1992, was killed in an Israeli airstrike on Hezbollah's headquarters in Beirut. IRGC Commander Abbas Nilfarushan was also among those who had been killed. In retaliation, Iran unleashed a barrage of missiles aimed at Israel's military infrastructure. According to the IRGC, their hypersonic missiles targeted three military bases in the Tel Aviv area. Iran justified the strike as a response to Israel's assassination campaign and the ongoing bombings of Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria. Iran's president, Massoud Pazeshkian, declared the attack a decisive response to Israeli aggression. While Iranian state media lauded the success of the operation, Pazeshkian said, let Netanyahu know that Iran does not seek war, but it stands firmly against any threat. Do not enter into a conflict with Iran. Benjamin Netanyahu vowed retaliation. Nations of the world should support the brave people of Iran who want to rid themselves of this evil regime. Responsible governments should not only support Israel in rolling back Iran's aggression, they should join Israel they should join Israel in stopping Iran's nuclear weapons program. In this body, in the Security Council, we're going to have a deliberation in a few months. And I call on the Security Council to snap back UN Security Council sanctions against Iran because we must all do everything in our power to ensure that Iran never gets nuclear weapons. As I have said, I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself. My commitment to the security of Israel is unwavering. Netanyahu condemned Iran's actions as reckless and warned of further escalation. Israel is being criticized for its hypocrisy after a CNN live response stated that the Mossad HQ and key military sites were embedded in civilian infrastructure, aka human shields. The US intel view that among the targets were Israeli airfields, but also, and this is crucial, the headquarters of Mossad, the, the International Intelligence Service of Israel, which is inside Tel Aviv. It's in the northern part of Tel Aviv, but it's in the city. It's in a densely populated area. Uh, and of course, the concern is if you're firing, even, even though Iran might consider that a military target, it is in a densely populated city uh, with civilians around it. As of now, Iran has bombarded Israel with almost 200 missiles. Naftali Bennett has said that after the attack by Iran, Israel has now its greatest opportunity in 50 years to change the face of the Middle East. There are times when history knocks at our door and we must open it, he added. This opportunity must not be missed. The Israeli military says it intercepted a large number of the ballistic missiles with the help of US defense. We are still assessing the impact, but initial indications are that Israel, with our assistance, was able to defeat this attack. Our joint defenses have been effective. The Iranian army has threatened the US and Israel with direct military action if they launch attacks on Iranian soil. Uh, they have to finish that process, whatever, however it turns out, they have to finish the process. This is uh, a little bit like uh, two kids fighting in the schoolyard. Sometimes you have to just sort of let it go a little bit and uh, 
We'll see what happens. Israel's occupation towards Palestine threatens to drag the entire region into a prolonged, devastating war. There is nowhere in the Middle East Israel cannot reach. And the world, as always, watches from a distance.